A Divine Revelation of Heaven by Mary Catherine Baxter. This is an abridged version. Please see your favorite bookstore to get a copy of the full text. This book is an account of a number of true experiences I've had with God. It is not the work of an overactive imagination or the pipe dream of someone who hopes for something better than this life has to offer. Heaven is a reality, and the experiences I describe in this book are told to me just as they happen. I did not see everything there is to see. It will take an eternity to do that. I do not relate everything I saw in heaven. Even Paul did not do that. But I am relating all that God has told me to share. I am grateful to God who has called me to share this message. I thank you who have strengthened and encouraged me in my God-called ministry. God bless you all. Mary Catherine Baxter To Catherine from Jesus For this purpose you were born, to write and tell what I have shown and told you, for these things are faithful and true. Your call is to let the world know that there is a heaven and there is a hell, and that I, Jesus, was sent by the Father to save them from torment and to prepare them a place in heaven. Chapter 1 Inside the Gates God in His infinite mercy and grace permitted me to go to that beautiful place called heaven. Let me start at the beginning. One night, the Lord appeared to me and told me I was chosen for a special assignment. I submitted myself to God completely, and astonishing things began to happen. For days after I was taken by the Lord into hell, I was very grieved in my heart. On the thirty-first night after these events began, at two o'clock in the morning, a mighty angel stood beside my bed. Jesus Christ was standing behind the angel. The mighty messenger of God said, God has given me a special mission. I am sent here to take you to heaven and show you parts of it. At once, I was supernaturally transported from my home and found myself standing outside one of the gates of heaven. The overwhelming beauty of what I saw around me was breathtaking. The clothing the heavenly being wore looked like a brilliant garment of light. The angel had triangular shaped wings that glistened with the colors of the rainbow. The next thing I knew, the angel repeated an exclamation I would hear many times, Behold the glory of God. The angel accompanying me moved over to speak to the two guarding the gate. One of them went inside the gate and returned almost immediately with a small volume. The book had a gold cover, and the printing inside was also in gold. It seemed to be a book about my life's history. My name was stamped on the cover, Mary Catherine Baxter. A smile of approval came over the angel's faces. She may come inside the gate. My guiding angel escorted me through the magnificent gate and into heaven. Suddenly, music filled the whole atmosphere. It was all around me. It seemed to penetrate my very being. Wave after powerful wave of beautiful music and singing surged across the landscape and seemed to envelop everything and everyone. When I stepped inside the city, amazement again took my breath. The landscape of that incomparable city was beyond description. Surrounding me were the most beautiful, colorful flowers I'd ever seen. There was unbelievable greenery and vegetation everywhere. Even the blooms of the flowers seemed to be alive to the music and singing. I saw some of the exuberant citizens of heaven, and they were all dressed in robes. The happiness and joy that beamed from their faces was beyond compare. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Since we, as children of God, have been transformed and made new by the miracle of regeneration, and since we are now new creations in Christ, it is a joy to know that the place where we will spend eternity is prepared by the Savior who saved us. Heaven is a perfect place. Nothing will ever mar any part of that heavenly abode. There will never be anything allowed to enter heaven to defile it or spoil it. Heaven is beyond the reach of sin and sinners of every kind and description. Satan will be forever barred from that heavenly place. The demons cannot enter heaven. 
the fallen angels who rebelled against God cannot return. Nothing will be lacking in heaven. Its glories, its beauties, its wonders are beyond human powers of description. The splendor of that beautiful place is wondrous to behold. The combined brilliance of the light of the Son of God reflecting on the walls of jasper, the gates of pearl, mansions unnumbered, and the beautiful river of life create a scene no artist could adequately depict. I saw entire families together. Everybody was happy, going somewhere, doing something, smiling. They were constantly busy. They spent their time praising and magnifying God. The atmosphere of music was the dominant mood. Eternity will not be spent in leisure and laziness. Our time will be occupied in service to God. Just what the nature of the service will be, we cannot say, for there can be no doubt that His people will serve Him. I can see diamonds glittering, glistening, exquisite diamonds, diamonds everywhere. Some were as large as blocks of concrete. Some of these diamonds seemed to be for the mansions of those who were soul winners on earth. At one point, I was taken to a particular place. The angel said, God wants me to show you the room of tears. I know many of you have cried. You felt like all hope was gone. You grieved over your lost loved ones. I want to tell you that God showed me a room of tears. It was so beautiful. The angel took me to a grain entranceway that had no door. I could see the room itself wasn't large, but the holiness and power radiating from it amazed me. Lined with crystal shelves, the inside walls glowed with light. On the shelves were many bottles. Under each sparkling cluster of glass-like bottles was a plaque with a name on it. Inside the room I saw a man who appeared to have been glorified. His deep purple robe was very beautiful and looked like velvet. At this point the man in the room said to me, Come and see, I want to show you this room and explain to you about the tears. This is only one of many rooms like it. I'm in charge of this room. As he talked, a large angel came through the entranceway. The angel held a small bowl in his hands. The golden bowl was filled with a liquid. The man in the room told me, He has just brought me a bowl of tears from the earth. I want you to see what we do with this. The angel handed him the bowl and a piece of paper. The note held the name of the person whose tears were in the bowl. The man in the room read the note and then went over to one of the places where the bottles were kept. He read the plaque under the bottle and matched the person from earth whose name was in the note. The man picked up the bottle that was nearly full and brought it over to the bowl. He poured the tears from the golden bowl into the bottle. I want to show you what we do here, the man said. Tell the people on earth about this. Then he took the bottle over to the table picked up one of the books and opened it and said, Look, the pages in the book were completely blank. These are the tears from the saints of God on earth as they cry to God. See what happens. Then the man poured a drop from the bottle, one little teardrop on the first page of the book. When he did, words began to appear immediately. Beautiful words, elegantly handwritten, started appearing on the page. Each time a tear fell on a page, a whole page of writing appeared. He closed the book and spoke. The most perfect prayers are those that are bathed in tears, that come from the hearts and souls of men and women on earth. Then the angel with the rainbow wings said to me, Come and see the glory of God. Immediately we were transported to a huge place with thousands and thousands of people and heavenly beings. Oh, it was beautiful. The angelic messenger took me over to the throne of God. Suddenly, I saw a book lying on the huge altar in front of God's throne. I saw angels bowing before him. Standing in awe, I watched this scene, and I saw what looked like a man's hand 
come out from of the cloud and open the book. Somehow, I knew it was the hand of God that opened the book. Amazed, I saw what looked like smoke ascending from the book. Suddenly, the most beautiful perfume I'd ever smelled filled the whole area where I stood. The angel told me that this book contains the prayers of the saints and that God was sending his angels to the earth to answer the prayers from the cries of their hearts. Everybody was praising and magnifying God. As God opened up the book, pages began to come out of the volumes and fly into the hands of angels on horses. I could hear his voice, like the voice of loud thunder, shouting and saying, Go, answer her prayers. Go, answer his prayers. Chapter 2 The Throne of God First there is an atmospheric heaven. This is the atmosphere around the earth. It is where the birds fly and the winds blow. Then there is the heaven of space. This is the region of the sun, the moon, and the stars. It is mentioned in the Bible in many places. The destination of the righteous, however, is beyond the atmosphere and the starry skies. As I went with the angel, I could feel joy, peace, and happiness everywhere. My thoughts went to my family on earth, and it seemed the angel knew my thoughts. He said to me, You have a mission to fulfill for God. You are to tell the people on earth what is up here. God is showing some of heaven, but not all of it. When we reached our destination, I could hear many, many voices singing praises to God. The magnificent music of the worshipers of heaven thrilled my soul. Honor and glory echoed and re-echoed across a wide expanse of heaven as seraphim and saints sang endless anthems of praise with exuberance. My soul was exhilarated and transported with joy. Somehow, I knew we were nearing the throne of God. The angel who guided me stopped a long way off, far back from the throne of God. I could see a panoramic view of events that were taking place. As I gazed in rapture at the scene before me, something even more wonderful happened. I could hear louder than ever these thousands upon thousands of voices praising God. God's throne was high and lifted up. Coming out from under the base, the river of life flowed in its beauty and purity. The glory of God overshadowed the throne. It seemed that lightning, thunder, and voices were all around the throne. I saw a rainbow arching above and around the throne. The brilliant, glorious hues of the rainbow were mixed with light, producing dazzling, intense colors. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen on earth. Varied colors of radiant light signified glory and power. Blazes of splendor flashed from the throne. Beams of glory radiated from it. So much of heaven seems transparent, and those illustrious beams that come forth from the throne are filled with the light that is reflected in every part of paradise. How long I stayed in this heavenly arena, I don't know, but I was overwhelmed with awe. As before, the angel of the Lord said to me, Come, there are many things in heaven that I want to show you. I was amazed to see a room of records, in which meticulous records were being kept. The angel said that God has his angels keep records of every church service on earth, and every service in a home where he is lifted up and praised. God also keeps records on those who are out of his will. He showed me how God's angels keep records of the money that is given in church services, along with the record of the attitudes with which people contribute. He told me of people who have money but won't give to the work of the Lord. See the glory of your God, the angel proclaimed. When he disappeared, Jesus stood beside me. I looked at Jesus. He seemed to be taller now than I had perceived him to be before. The brilliant robe he wore hung on him elegantly and gracefully. Sandals graced his scarred feet. His face and hair were glorious and beautiful. As I gazed at him, I asked, Jesus, what are these rooms? He said to me, 
My child, these are from my people. They are for sinners on the earth, if they will only believe. I died to make them whole. As I looked into his eyes, I knew that he wanted people to believe that he, Jesus, had died so that we could be made whole. He said, Healings are waiting for people on earth. The day will come when there will be an avalanche of miracles and healings on the earth. Child, as you can see, these are supply buildings or storehouses. The blessings contained here await the belief of those on earth. All they have to do is believe and receive. Believe that I am the Lord Jesus Christ and that, that I am able to do these things and receive my gifts. When you go back to earth, remember that it is not you who does the healing. It is not the vessel that heals. It is I. Just speak my word and pray, and I will do the healing. Believe that I can do it. I shouted, Glory to God! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Jesus put his hand down, and the opening in the wall closed. Chapter 3 Before, Now, and After At this point in my vision, the angel of the Lord began to reveal things to me I'd often wondered about. He said, God has spoken, and I'm to show you before, now, and after. The things I'm going to show you will give you great excitement. I'm going to reveal to you what happens when a person is born again. I will show you how a person's sins are washed away by the blood of the Lamb in the record room. I'm going to show you what happens when a born-again individual dies on earth and his soul comes to heaven. We traveled from heaven at a fast rate of speed and soon we were back over the earth. I could see the earth as in a vision, and the angel said to me, Look, and behold. As the angel allowed the vision to pass before me, I saw a beautiful little church in the country. I don't know where the church was located geographically, but it was a rural church way out in the country. I could see about 30 people seated in pews. As I gazed on this scene, I saw a mighty angel standing over the church. The guiding angel beside me said, An angel is stationed at every church. This angel is in charge of all other angels at that church. An angel stood on either side of the pastor at the pulpit. Beyond those two were two more angels. This made for four angels around the pulpit. Two angels stood at the back of the church behind the congregation. Two more stood about halfway up the aisle, and up near the altar stood two more angels. So there were quite a few angels in that church, and several of them had scrolls and pens in their hand. The angel said to me, I want to show you what happens. The pastor began to speak. The ushers started to take up the offering. As the offering was received, the angel recorded people's attitudes in giving. They recorded the contributors' thoughts, whether they begrudged giving to the work of the Lord, or if they enjoyed giving the offering and viewed it as an act of worship. The angels logged it all in their record books. Then the two big angels in the front of the pulpit nodded their heads at the other angels. Then my guide said to me, I want to show you something else. Watch closely and you'll be blessed. Suddenly, it seemed as if I had been moved behind the pastor. As he was preaching on the sixth verse, Seek the Lord while ye may be found. Call upon him while he is near. I could see a host of heavenly beings inside the church. All the time the service was going on, the angels were rejoicing. The minister was anointed as he preached that message. One of the angels was pouring what looked like fire on his head. The glories of God were coming from the pastor's mouth. At the back of the church, a door opened and a man who was very drunk staggered in. He came down the aisle saying, I'm the one you're talking to, preacher. I need the Lord. I need to be saved. I'm an alcoholic. The man dropped to his knees at the front altar and began to cry out to God. As the man began to pray to God with upraised hands, I saw wide black bands that were wrapped all around him. He was in bondage to all kinds of sin but especially to alcohol addiction and drunkenness. A deacon said to him, 
You must confess these sins to God so that he can forgive you and so you can be washed in the blood of the Lamb. As he began to confess his sins, an angel touched him. I could see fire coming from the angel's hands. The bands started to break and burst off of him. This gave the man tremendous liberty. He raised his hands and praised the Lord. He stood up and I saw the glory of God come down on him. I know the Lord sobered him up because he began to shout praises to the Lord. We traveled back to heaven with the other two angels very rapidly. The angel said to me, now they must go to the angel in charge. My guide explained that in every record room there is an angel in charge. Everything that goes in or out of the room goes past that angel. All is done in order to the glory of God. I was amazed to see all the things going on. As I observed, the man's book was handed to one of the rejoicing saints. Page after page of their old writings were washed away. They lifted up pages one by one, and I could see that every page had been washed in the blood of Jesus. Nothing of this person's sins remained. And this scripture came to me from Isaiah. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Isaiah 43, 25 Again I stood before the throne of God. There were horns blowing, the sound of trumpets blared. There was much thunder and lightning. I could hear a multitude of voices saying, Glory to God, Hallelujah. I watched this mighty scene. I saw the angel lay the book on the altar of God and bow down low. The voice of God resonated loudly through the air, yet I understood every word. The blare of trumpets announced the saints as they came, one by one, to stand before God. An inestimable number of saints, angels, and heavenly beings made up a huge gallery. All of them were glorifying God. God said to the assembled saints, I see your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Welcome into the joy of the Lord. With that, the Lord placed magnificent golden crowns on the head of His sanctified ones. Chapter 4 Storehouses of Heaven I believe Jesus Christ revealed heaven to me as He did in the order to give me balance. He knew that I had been through many visits to hell and experiencing hell was so horrible that he gave me a blessing of seeing heaven. On one of my visits to heaven, I was shown God's storehouses. We began to go up higher through the atmosphere and went through the entrance to heaven again. I saw trees with beautiful fruit. I saw families dressed in beautiful robes walking up and down the hillside praising God. The environment was saturated with the most beautiful music you would ever want to hear. Heavenly music is a manifestation of joy. It is evidence of happiness. Heaven was like a symphony of music. Imagine, if you can, millions of perfectly pitched voices sweetly singing the melodies of heaven. Not a single one was off key. Everything was in perfect harmony. String instruments provide beautiful accompaniment along with trumpets and other kinds of musical instruments. They all blended with the voices of the redeemed saints who were praising God with rapturous joy. The tones of the instruments, like the singing voices, had been purified and made perfect by the power of Almighty God. Wave after wave of unbelievable anthems of praise billowed over the landscape and through the streets of heaven. I remember going with him through an area that was the greenest grass imaginable. There were huge clusters of flowers in certain parts of the grass. The flowers were splendid and looked somewhat like roses. Each plant had at least one bloom consisting of beautiful petals. Traveling on with the angel, we passed a place where there were beautiful white horses. These horses looked as noble as marble chess pieces. They looked as if they were huge statues that had been chiseled out of boulders, but they were real and alive. Their hooves were gigantic. They were very regal. A woman dressed in a beautiful robe was smiling and talking to the horses. 
directing them to bow their knees in praise to God. All of them at the same time bowed their right knees and praised the Lord. Suddenly, I could no longer see the angel with me, but there stood Jesus. He wore a robe that was distinctive from the robes of others. His piercing eyes were beautiful. He had what looked like a neatly trimmed beard and very thick hair. I remember looking at him and thinking that the tenderness in his eyes is beyond a writer's description. The loveliness of the blessed Savior was awe-inspiring and wonderful. Everything within me wanted to praise him, to worship and bow before him the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Glory and power billowed all around him. I noticed Jesus' eyes had taken on a troubled look. I asked him, Jesus, what is it? Child, look. He waved his hand toward a building where I saw a large opening. From the opening, glory and power billows came streaming out. Child, do you see the healings in these storehouses? Yes, I said. All of these blessings await the people of God. The sufferings in this life are indeed tragic. How much sickness, disease, physical affliction, deformity, and similar ills people suffer here. Sickness is a corruption of God's will. It is an unnatural element in the economy of God. It does not originate with God. It does not come from heaven. Sin is from an evil source, not a good source. In heaven with perfect bodies, we will rest in Christ with no more pain or physical affliction. Still, he wants us to be healed now. Although sickness is part of the curse of sin, Jesus has lifted the curse for believers through his atonement for sin. Jesus spoke to my spirit. Child, when you pray for somebody on earth, pray for them in my name. Remember that you don't do the healing. I do. Ask me to heal an eye or a leg, and I will do it. Ask me to straighten crooked limbs or heal sick bodies, and I will heal them. Whatever you want me to do, ask in my name, and I will do it. I have the answers waiting in these storehouses. Jesus emphasized that the blessings in these storehouses were his people and for sinners on earth. I remembered that he said that very soon there would be an avalanche of healings in the world. As we grow older, our bodies begin to wear out or deteriorate. This is a natural side effect of sin, and we will never be entirely free from these consequences. But God doesn't desire that we spend our latter years bedridden and ineffective. He wants us to keep active and productive. Jesus died so we could be made whole. Jesus Christ suffered for the healing of our bodies. Our privilege, our blessing, and our hope for wholeness and wellness are in Jesus. He is the hope for our physical well-being. There are storehouses of unclaimed blessings in heaven. They are ready to be claimed by God's people who ask in faith and in the name of Jesus. Chapter 5 Order in Heaven one purpose of this book is to tell you how I saw angels working in heaven. They are happy and joyful, never tired, never sad. They are always praising God. Redeemed saints are busy in heaven too. They always have work to do. Exactly what kind of work all the saints are engaged in, I do not know. But you can be sure that no one is idle in that fair land. Saints are busy in kinds of work that no one on earth has ever experienced. They are engaged in stimulating, exhilarating, fulfilling tasks. They are continually glorifying God and doing the things God has ordained for them to do. When I saw the angels who flew from the earth with reports, they were coming into heaven from all over the world. They had been to many church services and prayer meetings. While observing the things on the earth, they always held in their hands white pieces of paper that looked like scrolls with gold edges. Then they would return to certain areas of heaven and share their reports with other angels. The people I saw in heaven had distinctive features and were from all the nations of the earth. Another thing that made a lasting impression on me was the fact that heaven is such an orderly place. Everything was always done thoroughly, properly, and with the highest degree of excellence. No work was shoddy, no product poor, 
no activity mediocre. When I saw families walking on the holy hills of heaven and praising God, it was a beautiful sight. Their joy and happiness was uninhibited and without restraint. They seemed to always be going and doing marvelous deeds in the Lord's presence. Everything, whether done individually or in groups, was done in an orderly fashion. Heaven is completely free of impurity and imperfections. It is perfect in every sense of the word. Perfect joy and peace fill the hearts, souls, and bodies of all those who are there. God's children, as well as the angels and all the heavenly creatures, serve Him day and night forever. When we receive new heavenly bodies after the resurrection of the saints, we will never grow tired or become weak. We will never know fatigue. Our supernatural glorified bodies will never lose their strength. In eternity, time is suspended and circumstances do not ravish the mind, the will, or the body. To engage in the employments and enjoyments of heaven, we must have a heavenly nature. The architecture of heaven was designed and built in eternity, passed by the eternal God. In one part, I saw what looked like an entire block of the city of heaven. The buildings were very large, and across the top of each was a huge, impressive crown made of many jewels. They were all stately and spacious, far beyond anything you have ever seen on earth. I thought of how the scriptures say that when we are laboring on earth for Jesus, we are laying up the treasures in heaven. See Luke 18:22. The features of all the people I saw in heaven were glorified and beautiful. Not one person had any scars, and they all looked radiant and handsome. You are not going to be a vapor of smoke. You will have a bodily form and features. The Bible says that there are elders around the throne. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders, sitting clothed in white robe, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. See Revelation 4.4. The patriarchs in heaven are beautiful saints of God who have died and gone on before us. God has given them eternal life. I saw them as they will be when they receive their new glorified bodies after the resurrection. There was no darkness in heaven. There was only glory and might and power everywhere, especially as you neared the throne. The river of life flowed from beneath the throne. It was beautiful and looked like a sea of glass. When God speaks, it seems that twelve very large angels, each of them twelve to fifteen feet high, stand in front of the throne. How they blow their trumpets! Beautiful jewels adorn the fronts of their garments. With music and all the things they say and do, they influence the atmosphere. They seem to prepare the way for the Lord to speak. I could see a thick cloud enveloping the mighty throne when the Lord spoke or proclaimed a message. Then power would billow out from the front of the throne. In the midst of the throne, God Almighty dwells in a cloud of glory. God began to speak about His Son's blood. He spoke of how His Son's blood was shed for all people in the earth. He said that the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, can cleanse us from our all sin. See 1 John 1 7. When I was in heaven, it was thrilling and exciting to hear the voice of God. Although it was a mighty roar, the voice of God was pleasant. I could understand everything He said. I remember thinking, Heaven is real. These people, these angels are real. All of this is beautiful, and someday I'm going to inherit this as I continue to serve the Lord. Chapter 6 What Happens to Children this part of heaven is really going to thrill many people. I was with a great angel with mighty rainbow-colored triangle-shaped wings. The angel wore a white glistening garment, and his hair was spun like gold. His features were beautiful and glorious. Light and power were all over him. He said, God has said I must show you the place where children go and what happens to them when they die. Come and see. He moved his hand in the air, and a vision of a hospital appeared. I saw a woman in the labor room having a child. The angel of the Lord said to me, She is having a miscarriage. The baby is only three months old. As I took in the scene, 
two beautiful angels appeared by her bed. In their hands, they held what looked like a basket made of white marble and pearl. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. It opened up in the center and closed on each side. The angels were praising God. I could hear them. When the woman had the miscarriage, the baby's spirit, like a vapor, arose from that little teeny baby. The angels of God caught it, put it in the basket, closed the lid, and raised their hands toward heaven. The angels began to shout praises to the Lord. They acclaimed him and extolled him as King of kings and Lord of lords, creator of all things in heaven and earth. They shouted, To God be the glory. As they came past us, they said, Come and see. We went back through the gate into heaven. I remember going with the angels to a certain place in heaven. We went up so high I could see the throne again, and I could hear the shouts and the praises of God. This time we seemed to approach the left side of the throne. The angels set the basket they would carried down on the throne and bowed. Their wingtips went up. Shouts of glory and hallelujah and praise God sounded all over heaven. Large angels were blowing trumpets as if they were announcing something. Then I saw a hand open up the basket. I'm sure that it was the image of God's hand. I saw the hand come out of the cloud and open up the basket. It took that little soul out of the basket and laid it on the altar. Then I saw hands begin to work on this little soul. When the task was finished and completed, the most beautiful, perfect form of a human began to appear. It continued to develop until it became the most handsome young man I have ever seen. I saw what I perceived to be the top of God's head. It looked like wool. A marvelous transformation took place as God breathed into this little baby, and it became a fully perfect creation. The angels began to shout and praise God. As I watched this magnificent manifestation of God's power, all of the questions that I had ever had about what happens to infants and children vanished completely. Now I know, without a doubt, that they are in the hands of God, being made into perfection. Then I saw parents and family members as they began to move around and gravitate to certain individuals. They began to shout, leap, and jump. I could not understand what was taking place. The angel said to me, These loved ones are recognizing their family members. Those who had been dismembered, paralyzed, crippled, or had died prematurely were now in a state of perfection. They had been made whole. In heaven you will know everyone. You will know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You will know Moses and all the prophets. You will know all the disciples of the New Testament. You will know every person in heaven. You will have very extensive knowledge. The angels said to me, Come, you're going inside the gate. It was designed like a garden gate with wood around it, but it was made of what looked like whitish stone or marble. Beautiful flowers grew all around it. We went through the gate and witnessed all the wonderful rejoicing and reunion of all of God's family. An angel of the Lord said to me, From the time of conception, a baby is an eternal soul. If a baby is aborted or miscarried or somehow dies, God knows about it. He has given his angels charge over them. We bring the little souls to heaven, and God completes them. It doesn't matter if a baby has been aborted or dies naturally. It is fashioned and formed into perfection by the mighty hand of God. If the parents of these children will live righteously in Jesus Christ, when they come to heaven, they will be reunited and will know their precious loved ones. They will meet them at the gates of glory. Chapter 7 Worshiping Around the Throne I praise God for the opportunity to put my vision of heaven in a book. I have shared the heavenly vision as well as the experience of hell in many churches where I've ministered. If you have lost a loved one, someone who has gone on before you to heaven, that person will meet you at the gates of glory. The angels I saw in heaven were powerful and sincere. 
They had their minds set to obey God. It was obvious to me that the mighty angels I saw at each gate were protecting angels. As I saw the swords by the angel's side, I thought, Well, glory to God, hallelujah, God surely does protect his children. With the angel guiding me, we moved very quickly. We passed many fruit trees that grew beside the river of life. Every one of them was loaded with beautiful fruit. As we moved along, it seemed that we became part of the music. At all times in heaven, I heard music, and it was always new. I heard continuous musical praises being lifted in honor and praise to God. The angel said to me, We are going before the throne to see the worship of God. Along the way, it seemed like hundreds of people were coming from all over heaven. They were going to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As we moved along, it seems the hundreds turned into thousands, and the thousands into an innumerable host. And the clouds, the most beautiful clouds, were billowing in and out around the throne, shaped almost like the mushroom cloud of an atomic explosion. Each cloud was mixed with glory and beautiful colors. A dazzling rainbow arched above all this. It is impossible to imagine the intensity the power of God. I knew in my heart that the image of the man I saw in the clouds was a representation of God. As we arrived at the place of the assembly, I was impressed that everything was done in order. I saw horses. The big, white, magnificent horses looked as though they were made out of marble. They were beautiful and without a single flaw in any of them. They were elegant, like chess pieces, but they were physically real. The blankets on the horses' backs were neatly trimmed with gold edging. Gold reins were in their mouths. They had ornaments on their feet and even on the brush of their tails. The horses stood alert before the throne. I noticed that the twelve angels standing before the throne had trumpets and musical horns by their sides. Their flowing, glowing garments were trimmed with gold and embedded with big rubies and all kinds of intense stone. I saw musical instruments. They were the most spectacular instruments you could ever imagine seeing. There were many harps. The Holy Spirit very clearly showed me something. The woman who was in the center of the group of horses stood still. Then the angels in front of the throne, each one in order, picked up the trumpet or horn by his side and began to blow. When they blew these horns, oh, the sounds of joy and high praise that went up. Someone in heaven loudly proclaimed, It is now the time to worship the King of kings and Lord of lords, for his glorious acts and his glorious power unto the people of earth. It is time to give him high praise, to worship him in song and dance, to worship him with music, and to worship him for his goodness. He is God. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Redeemer of mankind. As they announced these things, the trumpets were sounding. Then the angel who was reading the scroll stopped, and a signal was given. Immediately, those magnificent horses all bowed their knees. The horses then began to spin and prance before the Lord. They did all kinds of things to magnify and praise and worship God. At that time, all the heavenly musicians began to play, and another group of worshipers came in. Thousands of voices sang in honor and praise to Jesus. The sounds of glorious shouting went up. There was ringing all over the heavens. For hours, it seemed, praises rang out to God. When I returned to the earth and began to ponder the many wonderful things God had shown me, I looked into the Word of God. It seemed that everywhere I turned, I was reading something about heaven and God's majesty. Chapter 8 Holy Creatures in Heaven On a trip to the throne of God, I saw four living creatures that were before the throne of God. All of the heavenly creatures had large eyes, some in the front and some in the back. They could see in the front of them and behind them. They were very large and unlike anything I had ever seen on earth. Each of them had six wings. One had a face of a lion. The second had a face like a calf. The third creature had a face like a man. Imagine a very tall creature with six wings. The fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. All of these fascinating creatures were constantly crying out, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. I knew that God had created all these creatures in heaven. 
I praise God for His mighty acts and His mighty power. As I watched these creatures, they began to praise and worship God Almighty. They continuously give God praise and honor. Along with the 24 elders, worshiping the Lord is their main occupation. I saw an innumerable multitude of angels as they began to worship the Lord. I heard and experienced the unforgettable scene as the elders around the throne joined in. I too joined in worshiping the King as I thought, oh, how glorious to see the power of God Almighty. The Glories of Heaven, Chapter 9 The divine visits began during the Easter season. Jesus appeared to me from 2 a.m. to 5 p.m. for 30 nights, showing me the destination of those who reject him. Before I saw heaven, he took me into the center of the earth and showed me the abode of the dead. I wrote a divine revelation of hell in which I related my experiences. After those trips into the depths of horror, for ten nights Jesus showed me heaven and its glories. Additionally, there were other visitations from the Lord. I noticed on every one of my journeys to heaven that the angels were always busy. It seemed that each angel had his particular assignments and certain jobs to do. But all of them were always praising God and performing their duties happily as they went about their business. All of the angels were constantly occupied with their duties. For example, when new souls come to heaven, angels meet them and lead them immediately through the river of life. The angels escort the new souls to a place where other angels outfit them with the gowns of salvation, which are robes of righteousness. The angelic guides take them to the room of the crowns, where each person is fitted. All these things are done in beautiful, perfect order. I never saw the bells in heaven, but I heard them ringing constantly. I was told that every time a bell rings, a soul on earth was just saved. This is called the glories of heaven. I noticed that all during my visits to heaven, I saw beautiful tables. Sometimes on earth I have seen Victorian or some other style of furniture with elaborate designs on the pieces. You've probably seen such beautiful pieces. In heaven, I saw tables like these everywhere that were even more exquisitely designed and made. Every time you give money, every time you pay tithes, everything you do for the glory of God is recorded in heaven. It made an impression that will never be erased from my mind. During my trips, I noticed that many angels came to heaven with reports from all over the earth. They would go to a certain room with a recording angel in charge. The messenger angel would read the report. The recording angel would ask, Are you a witness? Did you see this take place? When the report was confirmed, it was logged in a book. The books were eventually taken to the throne of God. But first, they had to go through a special process. I vividly remember that the Spirit of the Lord moved continuously in heaven. It was greater than anything on earth. Things on earth are patterned after things in heaven, but earthly things can only be a shadowy reflection of those in heaven. Unbelievable music, unhindered praises, and other glories that earth can never imagine abound in heaven. God wants His people to praise Him. Remember that heaven is a place that God has prepared for those who love Him. Earlier I described the record rooms, but now I want to depict another aspect. A number of angels sat in a certain section of the record rooms. They had golden buckets in front of them. This is also part of the glories of heaven. In front of the angels were stacks of books. Some of the markers in the books seemed to be messages from earth. Each message had to be examined by a large recording angel. I saw two other angels who brought messages from earth. There was a new message every time someone was being born again, having truly been saved from the sins by accepting Jesus Christ into his heart. When someone truly repented of his sins and asked Jesus to be his Savior and Lord, it was recorded that that person had given his life to the Lord. The angels with the golden buckets each took a book from the stack. Each angel held in his hands what looked like a blood-stained cloth. Each red cloth was mixed with glory, light, and power. It was not gory or anything like that. It was beautiful. Each angel positioned the selected book in front of him. Starting at the page, he expunged the written record with the blood-stained cloth. With God's direction, the angel erased the old history of the sinner, recorded that he or she had just been born again. 
It was so beautiful to see the angels washing the pages. Hallelujah! God wipes the slate clean for each of us. As I saw this, I heard the saints in glory sing, Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away my sins. Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ can make me whole today. Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse me today. And then I heard the angels singing this song. Another one's been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Another one's been saved from the devil's hand by the blood of the Lamb. Another one's been saved from hell by the blood of Jesus Christ. Chapter 10, Visions of Angels at Work. In this chapter, I want to tell you about my visions of angels at work. I want you to understand some of the beautiful things God has shown me. I want to give you some joy and delight in knowing what awaits you as you are working for the Lord. At the start of these experiences, Lord Jesus Christ appeared in a glistening white robe, full of light and power. Jesus seemed to me about six feet tall. His beard always appeared as if it had been neatly trimmed. His thick hair rested lightly on his shoulders. His beautiful eyes were piercing. The portrait of Christ is the closest way I saw him in my vision, shows him on the wailing wall, praying over the Jews in Israel. Jesus Christ has so much love and compassion for us, as the artist portrayed in that portrait, that he will go to great lengths to show a person hell and heaven and things to come. When I was in heaven, I saw chariots of fire with angels driving the chariots. They were very large vehicles, and I marveled at their splendor. At the times of these visions, I was ministering in a particular church service. I had been in deep prayer and meditation. At church that night, I saw angels everywhere. They had golden swords in their hands. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said to me in a very clear way, Child, when prayer time comes for the people, I want to heal certain physical problems. I want this to be a sign in your ministry that the testimony of hell is true. I have given my word that I will give signs and wonders and work miracles as the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ is preached. I became so excited. In my spirit I saw an angel with a large book writing down the things as I preached. It seemed as if the ceiling opened and I could see a vision of the throne of God. Angels were rejoicing and praising God. When it was time for the altar call, I saw angels going among the congregation, nudging people to go to the altar and give their hearts to the Lord. When I saw the angels touching the hearts of individuals, the blackest sins began to churn up and out of their hearts as they knelt and prayed to God. Oh, it was beautiful. In my spirit, I could see the chains were wrapped around these people. As people received forgiveness, angels seemed to break the bondage, to shatter the chains, to cast them off. The bands broke as people began to raise their hands and confess their sins to the Lord. Cries and shouts went up everywhere from souls who had been delivered. It was wonderful. In many of my services all over the world, God provided great miracles like these, and wonderful deliverances began to happen. I know that the angels are at work, helping me with the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 11, The Word of God In many services where I go, I see so many beautiful things that the angels are doing. You know, of course, that the angels are ministering spirits of the Lord sent forth to minister to the heirs of their salvation. Once I saw a minister prophesying. As he was prophesying, God opened up my eyes to see an angel over his head. The angel was pouring on him what looked like oil mingled with fire out of a horn. Then I saw the man's heart in a vision. It was full of the Bible, the Word of God. The words seemed to come from his heart, into his throat, and out of his mouth. I could see the word as it came out of his mouth. As it hit the air, it seemed to be a two-edged sword. Another angel was recording what the man of God said. As the minister prayed for people who were sick or afflicted with diseases, it seemed that the Lord allowed me to see a dark spot in a lung, a leg, a heart, or wherever the affliction was. The sword of the word would go to the affected place in the body, and heat would begin to form around it. I was allowed to see spiritually how disease was really burned out of a person's body. 
As I saw new skin and new cells grow where the old had been, I began to praise the Lord. Later, as I talked to some of them, they would come to me. I was miraculously healed that day. Here on earth, we only see in part, know only in part. We see and know only what God allows. What I saw was only as God permitted, and I give Him all the credit, the honor, and the glory. In the visions God gave me of scenes on earth, every time the saints would cry out to the Lord for help, the Word of God would be there. An angel would have a huge Bible in his hands. Then I would see the angel open the Word of God and shove it in Satan's face. Satan would be there in the form of an evil spirit or a serpent. When the angel opened the scriptures, the devil would literally fall back, screaming because he knew the angel was using the two-edged sword against him. When demons have been cast out of someone in a service, I have seen evil spirits come out like dark shadows or apparitions. When Jesus' name is called upon, I have seen angels take that evil spirit and bind it with a chain. When I have seen that, I have thought, God, how beautiful your word is to deliver these demon-possessed people from evil power. When the Lord Jesus gave me a revelation of hell, I could see with my spiritual eyes that all around my home the Word of God was written in the sky. Around in and outside my house was a great assemblage of angels. Some were sitting, talking among themselves. Another group had a very authoritative look and seemed to be watching. The angels in the third group around my house were standing wingtip to wingtip with their backs towards my home. This last group, composed of the largest angels, all looked like warriors. Each had a long sword at his side. If even a dark shadow tried to creep toward my home, they would pull out their swords and defend my family. Chapter 12 A New World is Coming Again I was with the Lord Jesus, and we were soaring up in the sky. Jesus said, I want to show you the love and goodness of God in parts of heaven. I want you to see the wondrous works of the Lord, which are so beautiful to behold. An angel said to me, See the goodness and kindness of the Lord your God. His mercy endures forever. There was such a sense of love and tenderness about the angel that I was about to weep when he spoke again. Behold the power and might and majesty of God. Let me show you the place he has created for the children. Suddenly. There was a large planet looming before us, a planet that appeared to be as large as the earth. The next thing I heard was a voice of the Father saying, The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one. The Father and the Son are one, and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. I sent my Son to die on a cross so that no one needs to be lost. I am about to show you the place I made for my children. I care greatly about all children. I care when a mother loses a child. Even as fruit of your womb was cast before its time, you see, I know all things and I care. From the time there is a life in the womb, I know. I know about the babies that are murdered while they are still in their mother's bodies, the aborted lives that are cut off and unwanted. I know about the stillborn and those children who were born with crippling defects. From the time of conception, each is a soul. My angels go down and bring the children to me when they die. In heaven, they are loved, and they become perfect beings. I give them whole bodies and restore whatever parts are missing. I give them perfected bodies. All over the planet, there was a feeling of being loved, a sense of perfect well-being. Everywhere I looked, there were children engaged in all kinds of activities. I saw a child learning the Word of God and being taught music from a golden book. I was surprised to see the animals of all sorts coming up to the children or sitting beside them while they were in this angelic school. Jesus gave me the interpretation of my vision and gave me greater clarity about what will happen then. Soon I will return and take back with me to heaven the righteous dead first. Then, after them, those who are alive and remain will be caught up to be with me in the air. Following that, the Antichrist will reign upon the earth for an appointed time, and there will be tribulations such as there has never been before, nor will ever be again. 
and then I will return with my saints, and Satan will be cast into the bottomless pit, where he will remain for a thousand years. During that thousand years, I will reign over the earth from Jerusalem. When the millennium is past, Satan will be released for a season, and I will defeat him by the brightness of my coming. The old earth will pass away. Behold, there shall be a new earth and a new Jerusalem coming down upon it, and I will reign forever and ever. Chapter 13 The Return of Christ in another vision I saw the coming of the Lord. I heard his call like the sound of a trumpet and the voice of an archangel. The whole earth shook, and out of the graves came the righteous dead to meet their Lord in the air. For what seemed like hours I heard the trumpets blaring. The earth and the sea gave up their dead. The Lord Jesus Christ stood atop the clouds in vestments of fire and beheld the glorious scene. I heard the sound of trumpets again. As I watched, those who were alive and remained on the earth ascended to meet them. I saw the redeemed as millions of points of light converging on a gathering place in the sky. There the angels gave them robes of purest white. There was great rejoicing. It was the angels' responsibility to serve, and they were everywhere, giving special attention to the risen ones. New glorified bodies were given to the redeemed and they were transformed as they passed through the air. Millions were gathered before the throne, and I saw angels as they brought the books from which judgment was read. There was the mercy seat, and rewards were given to many. Then, as I watched in astonishment, darkness covered the face of the earth, and demon forces went everywhere. Countless evil spirits were loosed from their prison and spilled forth onto the earth. I saw an angry beast, and he poured his venom upon all the earth. Hell shook in his fury, and from a bottomless pit came swarming hordes of evil creatures to blacken the earth with their vast numbers. Men and women ran crying into the hills, the caves, and the mountains, and there were wars upon the earth, and famine and death. An angel announced, Hear, O earth, the king is coming. Then the King of kings and Lord of lords appeared in the sky. With him in glorious splendor were the saints of all ages, clad in purest white. Then the angels put in their sickles and harvested the ripened grain, which is the end of the world. I thought, we must love one another, for surely the King is coming. Chapter 14, The Lord's Final Plea, Be Ready. From the depths of my heart, I have shared with you many of the visions and revelations of heaven that were given to me by the power of God Almighty. I want to sum up my thoughts by expressing how much God loves us. He has shown us His care and great love by sending forth His mighty word to us and granting us revelations in these last days. Dear children, we must be ready to meet the Lord. We must at all times be looking for His coming. You and I know the troubles, the times, and the season we are in. There has never been an era like this. With all my heart, I urge you to be ready. Jesus Christ is coming back. Do you remember how I talked about the saints who are in heaven? The angel of the God told me that if we live righteously in Jesus Christ, we will meet our loved ones at the gates of glory as we go in. I talked about the books and records that angels keep. Everything we do for Jesus' sake is recorded, and our rewards are going to be much greater in heaven than they are on earth. Angels write down our deeds. I want you to be ready. If you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can be saved according to the scriptures. Please pray this prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you just as I am. I am a sinner. Lord, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me and to come into my heart and save my soul. Let me be born again by the Spirit of the living God. I give my life to you, Lord Jesus. I do believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you are Jesus Christ, who was sent to save my soul from hell. I want to give you thanks and praise and honor for redeeming me by your precious blood. 
If you have prayed this prayer with me and really believed in what you prayed, you are now saved. You have asked Jesus Christ into your heart. Begin to confess to him with your lips and praise him. To God be all praise and honor. Thank you.